So our NOMA distribution, that means the bell-shaped curve, our mean is 40, our standard deviation is 6. Estimate the area under a standard normal curve with a z-score of negative 0.4 to a z-score of 1.9. Now, hopefully you understand that 100% of the data is below a bell-shaped curve. So if we're taking 100% of the data, isn't 100% equal to 1? So we're going to say the area under this curve is 1. So then we're saying, okay, what fraction or decimal of 1 is between these two z-scores? So let's start with drawing a picture. So let's start with drawing a picture. Negative point, um, negative point 0.4 would be probably somewhere around here. And 1.9 will probably be somewhere around there. And so we're kind of looking for that. So we're looking for that percent, and that percent will be our decimal. Now, if you look at that, could you maybe approximate it? If you know your percents, you could probably approximate. It's probably a little bit bigger than 50% by looking at the picture or just understanding your percentages. So we know we're looking for something about 50% or more. But in the end, we need to use a calculator to do this. And we're going to use our TI Inspire. So we're going to use the norm CDF on the TI Inspire. Now, before I do that, do you guys understand? We call that 1, 0, 1, 2, negative 1, negative 2. Do you understand that for a z-score, isn't this 0, 1, 2, and so forth? So from that stated, we're going to do the, use the norm CDF button. Now, how do you norm CDF? And there's going to be four things you put in your norm CDF. Now, real quick, where do you find your norm CDF button? Here's the buttons you're going to push. You're going to hit Menu. Then you're going to hit 6. Then you're going to hit 5. And then you're going to hit 2. Hit those buttons, and you'll come up with a little template for Norm CDF. All right? The first number is going to be the lowest value. So isn't the lowest value going to be negative 0.4? So I'm going to put negative 0.4. And the largest value, the upper value, is 1.9. Now, since we're talking in z-scores, our mean is not 40. Since we're talking in z-scores, our mean is 0. Because we're talking in z-scores, our mean is 0. That's a kind of a trick right there you got to watch out for. And our standard deviation is 6, but in terms of z-score, isn't our standard deviation 1? So you got to be careful. When you are talking in z-scores, your mean is 0 and your standard deviation is 1. you got to be careful of that because you're in a different context. So for this, we start with this, 2 here, mean is here, standard deviation is here, hit enter. And when you do that, you should get something about 0.63. And that's our answer. Because the whole thing, area is 1, and that's 63%, which would be 63% of 1 is 0.63. So our approximate or estimate of area of this yellow part would be about 0.63, or 63% of the bell-shaped curve. So our normal distribution, so we have one of these, mean is 40, standard deviation is 6, what percent of the values are above 50? So if we look at the picture, we have 40 here. Add 6, that would be 46. Then we have 52. So we're looking right here. So we're looking above. So we're saying, what percent is that little corner? What percent is this little corner? Now, you should know it's going to be very small. The problem is, we don't have exactly at 52. We have a... a it's... We can't approximate it exactly, so we need to use a calculator to help us do this. And there's different ways of doing it. All right? The easiest way would just be using your calculator, and we're going to do norm CDF. So norm CDF. Our lowest value is 52. We want to go forever to the right. Now. I want to at least get maybe to 5 to 10 or 10 standard deviations above that. So what's a number really, really big? Let's just choose something really big, 1,000. Would that for sure be quite a few standard deviations above 52? 
So I'm going to put 1,000. Just some number way bigger than where you started. That's many, many standard deviations above. And then we next put our mean. And our mean is 40. And then we put our standard deviation, 6. So when you put that in your calculator, you get this is going to be equal to 0 0.023. And if you change that to a percent, it would be 2.3%. And if you think about the picture, that is a very small fraction, which would make sense that this number would be true. Now, there is another way of doing it. What you could do with norm CDF, you could also do it this way. It's up to you. Now, I just need to find your z-score. If you found your z-score using this formula down here, could you find your z-score and put it in there? Could you go to then, say, 20? Could you go to the 20th z-score high? Your mean is 0. Your standard deviation is 1. Could you do it this way? Yeah. The only problem with this way, do you have to then go and calculate z-score? Yeah. Is that a waste of time? Isn't it easier just to use this information? If we were given our z-score instead of this, it, then I'd probably use z-score. But I'm just going to use my data and use this top one. Again, if we crunch this and calculate our z-score, put it there to something way bigger, many, many z-scores above, this would work. But I'm not going to use that. It will get you the same answer, depending on if you, how much you round your z-score.